So to efficiently mainstream uh, resilience into programmatic uh, document, um, what uh, we found was that uh, the best way of doing it uh, is by using uh, the purpose and deliverable oriented uh, planning approach, uh, the PDOP approach, and by applying it uh, uh, to COVID-19, I think it should be the same uh, for the other hazards. Uh, it has uh, some stage. The first one uh, is to formulate the result levels, uh, meaning the vision, the impact, the outcome, which are the result level actually. And finally, the output. So one has in the first step to formulate those one. But in general, the vision is given. It's not something that is uh, uh, directly linked to disaster management or to resilience. It's given. So you don't have to formulate the vision in this framework. And the second one is to formulate the impact. And in general, they correspond to human and material and material losses in relation to the specific disaster we are talking about in this specific, specific case, uh, it's about the COVID-19. And the formulation of outcome should be done on the basis of the five uh, resilience phases we have seen in the previous uh, slides. And after formulating uh, the five uh, outcome, uh, which actually uh, are related to uh, the performance of uh, the duty bearers to assume their function to avoid uh, the human and the material losses, their performance. And also the outcome should reflect uh, the behaviors of uh, the right holders I guess the, the, the population, uh, which also uh, should uh, impact positively, uh, that is to reduce uh, the risk to have uh, human and material losses. So you have two components of the outcome. First one is relating to the performance of uh, uh, the duty bearers for in assuming their function. The second one is uh, related to uh, the behaviors of uh, Right holders. And finally, you formulate the outputs that are represented by everything that uh, right holders and duty bureau have to use or consume to obtain uh, the positive outcome we have uh, rightly uh, just now mentioned. So by doing so, uh, we can have in relation to uh, each of uh, the resilience phases, we can have the following uh, uh, result uh, levels. Uh, the first one could be the central, the concentrate and decentralized administration, as well as the population, ensure the prevention against the COVID-19. So that's relating to prevention. As you can see here, we have some mix outcome because this outcome is relating to the central, to the, the concentrated and the decentralized administration. And in terms of result orientation, uh, we need to break that down to, to have a very smart result. But in general, that's the way. So here we should, uh, we will have uh, one, two, three, four sub outcome regarding prevention. The same will be done regarding preparedness and the same uh, about the response and so on and so on for each of the phases of the uh, resilience. The step two is uh, relating to the formulation of the goals. I prefer purpose, uh, it's formulation of the purpose and deliverable linked to each of the, the outcome we have obtained in the previous step. So as I have uh, mentioned it previously, we need to break down the, uh, the outcome to, to have a specific outcome for each subgroup. And then uh, 
after formulating uh, the sum outcome, uh, we should formulate the purpose and deliverable linked to each sub outcome. And that we have shown uh, how uh, such a task can be efficiently uh, uh, fulfilled uh, in module two of the course. In step three, uh, we need to carry out the causes analysis, which means that for each specific outcome that have been formulated, we need to see why uh, the central administration, the decentralized one, uh, and so on and so on, are not currently fulfilling uh, efficiently their mandates uh, regarding uh, the, the, the disaster for which resilience is sought. Even the population is the same rationale, actually. Uh, we need to, to, to conduct the, the causes, causes, causal analysis. And that will uh, uh, actually lead us to see what are the responses uh, for the underlying structural causes arising from the previous step. Uh, and the, those responses will be, current, will be uh, the output that will help us uh, make the administration uh, more efficient and the population to have the right behavior that will uh, uh, lead to the transformation, the positive transformation of uh, uh, the disaster management. And the fifth uh, step is the formulation of uh, uh, the, the decisive and uh, the virtuous transformation loop. Uh, the decisive and the virtual transformation loop, which uh, is uh, the basic uh, tool uh, for PDOP, actually. So we can just build that, uh, uh, that uh, loop. And that loop actually will show us what are the major program uh, that uh, are brought out from this exercise uh, corresponding to, to the steps one to five. So once we got uh, that framework, we can now uh, just insert uh, the results in the corresponding national uh, programmatic document. It can be the national development plan, then all those outcomes will be inserted uh, in that document. It can be some sectoral strategy, then some part of uh, what we got from uh, step five will be inserted in that uh, sectoral document. So if you do uh, your job uh, as described until now, so you can benefit of all uh, the positive feature of PDOF of PDOP uh, that has been described in module two of, uh, of the course. Well, um, also given the multi-sectoral nature of resilience, uh, the coordination at the impact level uh, is essential. And that coordination uh, is relatively easy, uh, not the impact level, uh, also at the outcome level, is essential, but by uh, using your result framework got uh, from this uh, uh, step I have just described, make your work very easy to have uh, that coordination because you will know for each output uh, which institution uh, is in charge of, uh, of it through the nature of the output actually. So we are coming to end of uh, to the end of this, and there are two reflection questions that has been submitted to your attention, and uh, by uh, resolving them, uh, you, you may get uh, a better insight uh, on the methodology that uh, I just described. So um, the best prevention against COVID is still to avoid catching it. That's just uh, uh, for 
the female. And thank you for your attention.